Okay, so I'm going to go through building Bus Raider 2.01. Uh, as you might imagine, but with the numbering, uh, there was a slight problem with 2.0, which has been fixed. Um, so this is uh, the latest version of the board. It doesn't have any SMD components at all. Um, so I'm going to start off by populating some of the components that are lowest to the board, uh, which are probably the discrete components. So I'll start working through those. Um, so I'll start off with this uh, diode here. So this is a BAT85. I'm going to have to bend its pins quite close to the body, I think, to get it to fit. And that goes into here. So that's quite tight. And you have to make sure, obviously, that the black line on the diode matches up with the, uh, the, the two white lines on the board, which indicate the polarity of the diode. This one's just used to protect the input um, of the, the uh, ESP32, um, where the serial line comes in, because um, it's possible that you'd connect it to 5 volt serial um, and that would uh, damage the ESP32 so that's a way of um, just ensuring that any any extra voltage gets shunted away so um, I've also got a, a resistor here it's not actually the value that's shown on the board I've just got a 1k resistor oh no I haven't I've got a, I've got a 470m resistor maybe that, that'll do anyway um, it says 220 on the board, but I think I'll probably end up supplying these 470 ones. It it's, um, doesn't really make a lot of difference. Again, this is to do with the just the input uh, from an external serial connection. So I'll just solder these in place. Okay, so um, what should we do next? Um, so I think some of the lower lying components like these um, FETs, let's do those. There are five of these in a row, BS170s. These are used for a mix of different things, but mainly level shifting. So I'm just going to bend the pins on the back, which just helps hold them in place. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to bother with that. I'll just try and hold them like this. Yeah, that'll do. To get the board turned over. And then and they've got very fine spacing of the pins here, so to do some careful soldering. And if you bridge any of these tracks, then try and pay attention to that, and and then you can um, make sure that they don't remain bridged, perhaps by using solder wick. Um, which is this sort of product here. Um, so if you do bridge any of the pins, maybe after you've chopped the legs off, you can then go and have a look, inspect the joints, and, um, and if you have managed to bridge any of them, which is very easy to do, then maybe just use a bit of solder wick on those, on that area, so you just basically apply the solder wick. I don't think I've bridged anything, but I mean you can just apply the solder wick like this. Let me chop off the bit that I've already used there. And then 
you just basically apply it with the soldering iron and melt the uh, solder and the wick over the top and it sucks up the uh, the solder I could also use a solder sucker for the same kind of thing but I think barring a few little bits of solder lying around I think that looks okay so that's those I'm just going to check that they really are all BS 170s I did have a problem with some boards that I shipped the wrong kind of uh, the transistors there but they are all BS 170s so that's something else maybe worth checking so this one is a voltage regulator, 3.3 volt voltage regulator. Now it has unfortunately been supplied with pins which are already splayed out. I haven't managed to work out how to buy these without the pins splayed out like that. And the board is designed for pins very close together as you can see here. So I'm going to bend them back into more or less a straight line and then I'm going to, if I manage to do that, it's not, it's not very easy to do, uh, just to get a pair of pliers in tight enough is pretty tricky. But anyway, that's reasonably okay. They'll push apart as I push it into the board, but anyway, that that's probably okay now. And then I will put that in place here and then just push it right down. Okay, so that's that one. The middle pin doesn't seem to be... So I have managed to bridge those tracks now, but while well, trying to get the middle pin to to work, so I'll chop that off, and then we'll go with the the solder wick. So just push it onto the joint. Let's get hot, as you might imagine. So best not to hold it too tightly. You need a soldering iron with a really good thermal capacity to do this as well even though this one's quite good I think because this is a ground connection it's actually taken all the heat out of the soldering iron I think that's what's happened yeah so let me just try that again so I'm going to get a, a big lump of solder hot and then I'm going to just introduce the wick like this see if I can get that to work Let's sort of take the solder away. Not doing a very good job with that. Let's try a silver sucker. So this is a one that I quite like. It's an engineer one. Um, seems it's got a nice uh, tip. I probably ought to replace this tip now, but um, it, it allows you to squish it right down over the joint. So let's try and get that hot again. Soldering iron's looking a bit dirty. Give that a bit of a clean. Get a bit. Ironically, I'm actually going to put more solder onto the joint just to try and get a, a good thermal connection to the joint. And then once it's nice and hot, I'm going to suck the solder off. So that's worked fairly well. Um, okay, so now I'll do that again. This time I'll be a bit more careful and not bridge the two tracks together. Okay, there we go. So, um, so that's the regulator and the uh, a lot of the discretes in place. I won't put the, these bigger um, electrolytic capacitors, there's a couple of those here. I won't put those in place yet because they're quite tall um, but what I will do is I'll put these two decoupling capacitors in um, and should just sit over here so 
So that's those two. Right, so that's those. Um, and then let's have a look what else there is. There's um, there are a bunch of these resistor arrays. And then we get on to kind of IC sockets and uh, there's a switch here, but I think that's going to be okay. I can put that in a bit later on. So I think we'll put these in next. So this long one, you have to um, take note of the uh, the spot which is on this end, hopefully you can see that. So that goes in this position here and the spot goes where the square pad is. So that's that one. And then um, we'll put this one in place as well. This has also got a dot here and that goes in here. Now this one, because this is an array of four resistors, um, which are all independent. I haven't bothered to mark which is pin one. So actually, because it doesn't actually matter which way around you put this in, but I, I'll just put it in the same orientation as the other one, just for neatness. And then this smaller one, which is for four bust resistors. Again, the dot at the left-hand end and the square pad. So that's that. Hopefully if I can manage to turn this over without them all falling out. And then I will tack one end of them. So I'll just put solder on one end of each one and that will hold it in place. And then I'm going to look at it on the other side to see how vertical they are. That one's pretty good. This one I could just adjust slightly so I'm holding it with my thumb on the back while melting the pad that I tacked and just nudging it into into place so that it's vertical. So that's all of those. Finish off all the pins on these. It's a whole lot easier to construct now that I've removed all the surface mount components from this board. It was a bit of a challenge previously. Just trim those off. These are a bit long as well. Okay, that will do. Right, so um, what next? So I think probably do some of these IC sockets next. I think those are probably the next lowest things. So if we start with the 24 pin, the 20 pin ones rather, making sure we get the orientation to this little notch in the end, you should be able to see there. So that needs to be in the right position so that we remember to put the chips in the right way around. So let's just go through them. Sometimes the pins get a bit bent. There's one that's a bit bent. Just have to get them back into place to get them in. These are all in a stack. So there we go, that's a 16. So we want these two down here are 16s. That's the wrong way around. They're all all the chips are the same way around with the notch to the left as I'm building it. Which basically means that um, pin one's at the bottom left hand corner. And then the other 16 
pin chip is over here. Again, I think I seem to have a bent, something a bit bent there. There we go. So that one's in. Just realised that maybe I didn't solder the. Haven't done that quite as well as I should have done. So that's slightly raised. So it's not. It's going to be slightly more annoying to put the sockets in than it would have been if I'd got that flatter to the PCB, that uh, 13 pin resistor array, but anyway, I'm sure we'll cope with it. And then carrying on with the 14 pin chips, here we go, One, two, there are five of these, three, four, five. Okay, so yeah, so um, what I would normally do at this stage is get another PCB. As it happens, I've got one that's for a memory board here, but any any old flat piece of material should work. Put it over the top like that, and then just holding it in place, turn the whole thing over. Now that will probably be fine, except for that um, resistor array that I mentioned, which is slightly protruding. So. What I'm probably going to have to do is go through all of the chips, tacking one corner. Um, so there are, I think there are, um, let me see, there's, maybe there's 12 chips. So let's count, I've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine, ten, eleven. Maybe there are eleven chips. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, maybe there are eleven. So nothing's. Oh yes, yeah, something has dropped out. Obviously, were twelve. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, there are twelve chips. So that one I missed. So I'll do that one now. Right. So. Having tacked all the corners, they're all they're all held in place, but they're not perfectly seated. So I'm going to now go around pressing them all in while melting, remelting that same point that I tacked before, and hopefully that'll be enough to get them all flush to the board. Just putting a bit of pressure on from the back as I remelt the pin. It's not perfect, but it's it's okay. Would have been better, as I said, if I hadn't messed up with the um, in the first place with the, uh, the resistor array. Just using the pressure on the board now because it seems to be working quite well at holding them in place. That one's not really in place. That one probably isn't either. Yes, it is. Okay. Right, they all seem to be fairly much in place now, so I'm happy with that. Now I'll just go around and finish off all of the soldering of these.
Right, so that's all of those done, I think. Let's check. Yeah, I think um, I think that's all of the uh, the sockets soldered in place. I might have noticed I had one or two problems there with uh, getting the solder to to work on a couple of joints. Not quite sure why that was. Um, so okay, so that's the board as where we're up to at the moment. Um, so uh, I think now we'll probably start putting in some header headers. So these are the ones that hold the SP32 module. So two of those. So these are quite a lot higher than anything we've put in so far, but I think um, I think that'll be okay. Let me just check how high they are compared to these. Yeah, I think maybe maybe I should put these in first. So let's do that. So um, so we have a bunch of of these over this side of the board. Um, so I'm going to just break this strip up. So that's a nine pins, I think, there. And this is another nine. So you just shouldn't find it too difficult to break these. They, if you just hold it in the right place and push something sharp, your fingernail or whatever you can find, and then just apply a bit of force, they tend to break fairly easily in the right place. Um, so there's a six there, and then there's three lots of two. I think I actually started with a, a strip that was slightly shorter than 40 pins, 40 being the normal length of these strips when you buy them. Um, so it just happens to have worked out exactly right uh, for for all the ones I'm going to populate. There are some extension um, points here, so these this breaks out some uh, pins from the ESP32, which you can populate if you like uh, with a header strip. I'm not going to bother doing that. So I'm going to use some um, spare. Uh, sockets here to just hold some of these in place. They don't. I haven't designed them on exact uh, 0.1 inch boundaries, unfortunately. So it doesn't quite work as well as it would do. But um, I'm just going to stick these across um, in that sort of fashion, just just to hold them in place while I turn it over, and then I'll employ the same technique I used before. Um, of tacking one end of each strip and then um, and then I'll, I'll move them about as I go along so so that's that's hopefully held them all in place I can take these off now and then and then and then and then um, I will just uh, push them into place, see if I can get it straight. That's not straight, unfortunately. How's that looking? That's looking better. And then these. There we go. So, yeah. Okay, so that's those done, and then those are, those two are looking okay, I think. Okay. Right. Let's see, and then this one here, I think I'm gonna have to line up. This is a particularly difficult one because it's um, there's only a two pin, so I've got to try and hold the other one while I, to avoid burning myself. Yeah, so that's not 
Not so quite right. Let's see if that's any better. Yeah, I think that's kind of, kind of satisfied with that. So they all look fairly straight. So now we can finish that off. Okay, so now I'm going to put those headers in place that I mentioned. So um, this one first here and this one. And then we have the one for the Raspberry Pi. And there's another small 2x2 two two pin one for the Raspberry Pi, which does the reset button. So that's, that's all of those. So this is where the SP32 module goes. And this one is the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to just use this approach to holding those in place. Okay, so just tack this in place. And the smaller four pin one and then I'm just going to make sure that they're properly seated because it's quite it's quite beneficial to have these sockets nicely seated to make sure that yeah that's good that one's probably going to be okay as well yeah so they, they actually don't really sit any higher than the um, and these pins and that, and that one there is slightly skewed, but anyway, I'm not, not really going to bother with that. So um, let's just carry on with these now. I'm just going to make sure that that's really seated well. Yeah, it is. Okay, so more soldering. Okay, so I'm close now to completing this board. The uh, final components to install are the, the edge connector down here. Um, so that's um, a 40 pin uh, connector. Um, and then there's the, um, just finding that, there's the, uh, it's this connector here. So that's a, 90 degree angle 40 pin uh, sorry 40 times um, times 2 so it's I guess it's an 80 pin connector in total so that's takes a little bit of encouraging into place because it's the holes are quite tight and uh, it's quite a big connector but there we are that's got it in place so that goes in like that let's check that it's straight it seems to be so that's that one and then we have these two capacitors so there are the one on the left hand side is a 10 microfarad so that's this one's a hundred microfarad and the the white line is the negative side so and there's a little white uh, mark on the PCB here uh, to show you where that goes. So that's the one that goes in on the right there, that way around. And then just bend the pins on the back to 
hold that in place while I get the other one. So the other one's a 10 microfarad. Probably doesn't really matter that much what these values are. But um, as long as the voltage rating is high enough, which uh, they've got to be at least 5, 6 volt, I guess, to be safe. Um, so that's going to go into there. Like that. Right, and then we'll start doing some more soldering. Hmm. Really struggling to get that to work. Okay, so um, we just have these switches and the edge connector to solder now. So let's just get the switches in place. That's one. And the other one's a, so that's the demo button, which allows you to do, is used for demo mode and uh, one or two other functions. Um, and then this one's the reset for the Raspberry Pi. I thought that would hold in place better. I would have put it in earlier if I'd known it wasn't going to hold. Um, now let's bend it, bend it so that it it holds. Yeah, okay. I've just bent the pins over so to hold it in place. So solder those in. So I said there weren't any surface mount components, that's not quite true. There is this, which is the SD card socket, which is optional. In fact, it's not really supported in the software yet, but I do intend to support it. So um, that does require some finer soldering, um, but we'll move on to that in a second. Um, and the other thing I probably ought to point out is that there are a, um, a couple of these uh, places where there are um, pads that can be joined and the purpose of, of these really in the case of these two is just to uh, hold the inputs to um, gates these are it's actually a 74 HC 08 and one of the gates isn't used in that chip so this just ensures that the inputs to that gate don't float, which can be a problem with um, cause oscillation in some more, yeah, in some cases. So it's going to make those those two. So you just bridge those two. These two, um, I'm just going to leave, and I'll explain a bit more about those perhaps in a, another video. So there we go with this. Now I'm just going to do this long edge connector and then we'll have finished all the main components on the board and it'll just be down to the SD card socket. I think I probably should have soldered this before I did those two capacitors actually because it's made the board quite wobbly um, which is never never makes it easy so I think if you're if you haven't followed exactly what I've done and you just you've got to this stage without putting the capacitors in, then that's probably a good thing. I'm actually keeping it from wobbling by just putting my 
finger on the board and then of the hand that I hold the solder with um, which just holds it in place going back over a few pins, you may have noticed me doing that in the other parts of the video. Um, sometimes I just press on and then having a look back realise that I haven't properly made a joint so I then go back to it at the time. It's always very important to do a visual inspection of the board when you've finished. Just try and make sure that you've missed anything or can save yourself a lot of a lot of time by doing that. Yeah, I'm really regretting having put those capacitors in now because it's um it's also holding it like this, it's also quite hot, so I'm burning my fingers as I as I move along, which is not very pleasant. I guess if I went a bit slower it would be okay. Or if I just managed to hold it a bit further down so it's less it's less it's further away from where I'm currently I've most recently heated up. Okay, so the final component is this um, SD card holder. So I'm going to put that into place on the back here. Um, now, the easiest thing I've found with these is to attach one pin first. So I'm going to choose a pin that's relatively easy to get to, like this pin here. And then I'm going to just ease, hold it with my uh, thumb, I'm going to just ease it into place while melting the pin. Actually, I think I might have chosen two pins at a time there, but that's okay. So now I think that's looking okay and um, now now that I've got those it's it's held in place now quite well by that pin or two pins actually I think that I've soldered so now I'm going to just do the ones around the edges so you have to be a bit careful not to melt the plastic um, that the inside inside this metal is a plastic piece and it can get melted quite easily so um, you need to do this reasonably quickly, but what you're trying to do is get solder down onto the board um, at each of the corners. So let's try and persuade the solder down onto the onto the pad so it's actually holding the socket in place. It's easier at these corners because there is a, um, it's actually bent downwards so you can more easily get the solder onto the board. I think that's done it. And this one. There. So I think those are alright. Um, you can try lifting it up 
at each of the corners and just see if you've caught the you've managed to get the solder onto the board itself I know that one you can see I haven't because I'm able to lift that up so let's try that one again I think that's done it yeah now it doesn't move so that's good now we just have to do the pins so um, you just put a very small amount of solder on each one and don't worry too much about bridging because we always use the, um, the solder wick in fact, it's probably not a bad idea to use the solder wick in any case because these uh, the the SD card actually has to ride above these pins. So if you have anything protruding, um, then it it stops the the card actually going in properly. I'll just check out the card and micro SD card that I can actually get it in place. Get it in okay. So that seems to be all right. It has a it's a locking one. This one so seems a little unwilling to release, which is probably because of a bit more friction than it's than you should I should have on these. So it probably would be good to um, to use solder wick on those and just take a little bit off. But I'm not going to bother. I think once the card's in, the card's in. So it's not really a socket I'm going to use very very much. But uh, that completes the construction and now it's just a matter of putting the ICs in place.